God is Using, St. Timothy's Episcopal Church in Cincinnati, Ohio. By feeding the hungry. By making strangers friends. By welcoming the lonely. By loving everyone, no exceptions. Good morning, friends. Welcome to The Well. I am coming to you from the church, actually, this time. Hopefully the sound is all right and not super echoey. Delighted to be here to see you and to begin worship with this prayer. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father in law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the Mount of God, the Mount of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called out, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. 
and Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians opp oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and, and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am, I am has sent me to, to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Psalm 105 Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. The Gospel appointed for today is from the 16th chapter of Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake, will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, 
and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let me tell you a story. Don't stop me if you've heard it before. There was a man named Moses, a shepherd. He was also a miraculous baby, survivor of a state-sponsored massacre. He was also a prince in Egypt, adopted son of the princess. He was also a leader of the Hebrew people for 40 years, or he would be. He also would be a miracle worker and a lawgiver, one who spoke directly with God. But this day of this story, he was just a shepherd, a dude doing his job, keeping the sheep safe and fed. He was out in the fields with the sheep when he saw something strange, something surprising. It was a bush that was on fire, but was not burning to a crisp. It was just mysteriously, amazingly, and continuously on fire. I'm imagining that he had to stand there, hands on hips or in pockets, watching it for some time in dad's stance before he could decide that it was not actually burning up. Now, another person might have thought, huh, that's odd, and just walked on by. Still, another might have panicked in the face of this unexpected sight and snuffed it out. Moses, the book of Exodus says, turned aside to look. He saw and stopped and listened. And what's wild to me about the story is what the miracle actually is. So our rabbi friends would say that the miracle of this story is not the bush itself, but Moses stopping and listening. The miracle is not something flashy, but this guy seeing something that he didn't understand, something that might even have been threatening, and stopping to understand it better. God says to Moses, I know about the suffering. I've heard you all chanting in the streets. I've heard your wails in the night. I've heard your quiet, pained whimpering when you think no one can hear. I know. You are in bondage to greed and fear. You are enslaved by people with money and power. And some of y'all are the ones with the money and power and are enslaved to them yourselves. You are imprisoned by bigotry, your own and that of the people around you. You, Moses, and the Israelites are literally in bondage as slaves to Pharaoh. And that will end today. You were not made for oppression, but liberation. And God says to this ordinary human, God says, you will go to the God King, to Pharaoh, and tell him to let all my people go free. And Moses says, come again? Now, in theory, Moses would have had more of a leg to stand on since we just read the story about how he was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. But this bit of the story makes no reference to that. Honestly, Moses' life story feels a bit cobbled together from multiple sources, perhaps multiple heroic figures of the past. Either way, God shows up in this mysterious burning bush and tells a shepherd to tell a king to free the many, many slaves. Wild ridiculous. And yeah, Moses says, who am I to do this thing? Of course he does. Partly because that's the pattern of these kinds of stories in the Bible. Every time God shows up to call someone into service, the person says, wait, what? Me? No, nah, man, you got the wrong guy. Isaiah says he's too sinful. Sarah laughs at the idea. Even Mary at the Annunciation has some questions before she consents. It's the form of these call stories. God calls, the person resists, God offers a sign, something to ease their fears and let them know they're not alone. And then they say yes. Of course, he says, who am I? In the face of God asking him to save his people because it's how this bit of literature works. But also because it's what we say all the time. Who are we to push back on a school board or a legislature? Who are we to tell our stories of faith in God? Who are we to deserve caring friends and communities or to stand up for someone who's being insulted or hurt in public? Who do you think you are? Friends, this is the voice of my shame. Who do you think you are? It's so personal, so basic to my soul. And I don't say it to y'all now to get sympathy, 
We all have a voice of shame that pops up just when things are getting good or just when we've got a cool idea or maybe we finally feel like we're lovable. That voice speaks and we listen. My spiritual director calls it the demon. That's the demon talking, Alice, she says. I don't know that I believe in angels and demons necessarily, but I know what she means. And that's what Moses was dealing with, what we deal with all the time. Who am I to lead these people? And Moses eventually does say yes to God's call, as the story goes, a bit grudgingly, only after objecting again that he doesn't do public speaking well, he worries about his speech impediment. But he does also only say yes after asking God pointedly, and who are you? My dad used to say when I would mention a celebrity, and who is she when she's at home? Moses doesn't seem to know for sure who he's talking to. It's definitely someone divine, definitely someone powerful, but also this is a big ask. Is this really God? Moses needs to know that this is real. This call is not a joke. But also he needs to know how he's supposed to talk about this bizarre, mysterious experience to, to first the king and also to his people. Who are you? Who is sending me? What's your name? And God says, well, God says the unpronounceable name, the Tetragrammaton, Yohe Vav He in Hebrew, sometimes spoken as Adonai, sometimes as Hashem, the name. God says, sure, here's my name that's so holy it can't be pronounced and also um, so minimal that it can't really be translated either. And I can imagine Moses saying, yeah, it's good, helpful. God says, tell them I am sent you, in all caps. It's translated, I am that I am, or I am what I am, or sometimes even I am becoming what I am becoming. Later on in the Gospel of John, Jesus intentionally uses I am language to connect himself viscerally with God. I am the good shepherd, I am the bread of life, all those. It's beautiful and mysterious and, and kind of impossible to articulate. And it's also one of my most favorite bits of scriptural interpretation. Because our rabbi friends would also say that what God is saying with this name is this. All of existence is my name. That you and all of this exist at all. That's me. I am all that is, but not just a tree or a whale. I am the universe and the mere fact that there even is a universe. That's me. Not, hello, my name is I am, but I am. The interactions between things, like how trees breathe out oxygen for us to breathe, and then we in turn breathe out carbon dioxide for them, not the oxygen, not the carbon dioxide, not even the trees or us, but the fact that that happens, the action of exchange and mutuality, that's God. The living, almost pulsing energy between two people, the love that we share when we look at each other as friends, as partners, as community, that love that feels too big to be contained, that's God. That God concerns themselves with our suffering, with our fights and misunderstandings. That God weeps when we weep and laughs when we laugh. And that God, that vast God, calls us like Moses to do something beyond ourselves, something beyond these walls. We don't just welcome, we celebrate and advocate. That God goes with us as we confront powerful people and as we wander in the wilderness, that God provides what we need food for our journey. Because that God is in, with, and under all of everything and is present in our very breath and at the birth of stars and at the sacred moment of our deaths. That God calls us in this world in the midst of crisis. The church was founded in crisis and I am not convinced that we've ever not been in crisis, honestly. The lynching of the man Jesus, the chaos of his resurrection, the oppression of Rome, and the conquest of Constantine. There is no good calm time to love people or to try to change things. We have always been in the middle of things, 
pushing against one violence or another, always on the side of the oppressed. Or we're meant to be. We have also always seen the allure of empire, of allying ourselves with power so that we can make things better as we see it. And God, God calls to us like they did to Moses in the bush that is burning but not consumed. God calls to us like they did to Moses and it's not the bush that's the miracle. It's when we turn aside, when we stop and listen beyond what we think we know. When we turn aside from what culture says we should be afraid of and see not a burning shrub, but a widening circle. Roger said last week that whenever the people of God start closing down who's welcome, that's when the midwives show up. Yes. And this church has already been midwifing. You're welcome already to the LGBTQ community, your desire to see your part in systemic racism, your ministry in the prison system, with the homeless, with individuals struggling in their lives, with Stephen ministers. We as a community have already been helping God give birth to a new creation. So what's the next good thing? What are we called to now, St. Timothy's? What are the specific liberations that we are being asked by God to follow through with now? God goes with Moses and God goes with us to the school board, to prisons, the pride parade, our corporate offices, doctor's appointments, classrooms, houses, social media posts. God goes with Moses into the throne room and the boardroom. God goes with the people into the wilderness. And God goes with us into the throne room and the boardroom and the wilderness. Thanks be to God.
dear God. Today's gospel reminds us of an important lesson. You are God and we are not. Like Peter, we question why certain things happen in life. Why people we dearly love sometimes die far too soon. Why so many people in the world suffer every day. And so many other questions about life in an all too unpredictable world. Please explain to us some of these things so that we can handle them better. But you won't explain these things in human words. Thank you, Jesus, for telling us today what we need to know in the face of life's unanswerable questions. We need to pick up our crosses and follow in your footsteps, transforming, transforming our world one step at a time. Oh God, today we ask your blessings for all people in our world whose lives are filled with suffering and challenge. Those who are valiantly trying to rebuild their lives after natural disasters violence, and emotional or physical illness. Those caring for family members or friends with dementia. Those who struggle to provide financially for their loved ones. Refugees all over the world without homes or hope. Those in prisons and those who await their release those suffering because of systemic poverty, racism, sexism, and other collective sins. Deliver us from the temptation to withdraw into feelings of helplessness in the face of these challenges and inspire us to serve as instruments of your healing and resurrection throughout this troubled world. We pray for those on our prayer list, especially Kathy Pollock, Dick Simpson, Louise Lowry, Norma Blatt, Ava Brewer, Mike Holbrook, Mudeen Fries, Audrey Halbeck, Joan Murish, Alicia Cassini, Lauren Jones, Sharon Arnett, Judd Daly, Lorraine Heiser, Tom Keller, Tommy Leibkap, Grace Owens, Angela Berna, Selah Maisie Hart, Wendy Jones, Ann Koontz, William West, David Ellis, those grieving the loss of loved ones and for your own concerns. We pray for the dearly departed, especially. Heavenly Mother and Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, I have just a couple of announcements for you before we end our time together. And I've got them written down here. Uh, so the first one is that the 10th of this month, we are blessing the labyrinth down in the valley uh, in honor of Lisa Bernheisel. It is such a beautiful space. I have walked that labyrinth many times now, actually, since I started. Uh, and so we hope that you'll be able to join us on the 10th, I believe at 1 p.m. Uh, for that, and we will do it inside if it does rain that day. 
In September, we are going to be taking a collection of canned fruits for inter-parish ministries. So start looking for those at the store, bring them in. Uh, I'm told that we'll put them in front of the altar during the services, so uh, make that happen, I guess. Uh, and then the last thing uh, for announcements is that uh, I was hired, at least partly, to do some work with families uh, and, and reinvigorating our family ministry. And um, there will be an email coming, uh, if it hasn't already come out, um, with a doodle poll for families with children of any age is fine. Um, and if you don't have children and you consider yourself a family, come, it'll be great. Um, we're going to be doing a four-week series on creation care during... October. Now, I know uh, that this church has already done some good work with creation care. Uh, this is going to be sort of more family focused and really uh, around the idea both of the creation care itself, but also making connections among families between the kids, between the parents, etc. Um, there will be a doodle poll uh, that you can fill out to figure out when you are available and we'll create a group or two based around people's availability. It will just be for the month of October. Um, so it's a short commitment and, uh, and we hope that you'll be able to join us. Let's close our time together with the Lord's Prayer. Will you join me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, receive a blessing. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road and the blessing of God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Mother, Lover, and Friend, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, be with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.